Hi everybody, welcome to another R video. In this one, I'm gonna show you how to recode um, variables using dplyr. I already have a video that shows you how to do this using car, um, but I recently have decided it's easier and better to teach people in dplyr just because the recode command um, is the same in car and dplyr, but the syntax is different. And so if you have dplyr loaded, when you run a recode command using the car um, argument, then it'll destroy the variable. And so I've been teaching my students for a long time, well, if you're gonna recode a variable, make sure you have car loaded and dplyr not loaded. Um, but then we use dplyr to do a lot of other stuff. And so um, that confusion about when to have which package loaded, uh, I just decided wasn't worth um, using car for recode, even though I think the recode function in car is superior. Um, so that is why I am making an additional video to show you how to use dplyr to recode. And um, I'm only a little bit embarrassed to admit that it actually took me a long time to learn how to recode variables in dplyr because um, it, it took me uh, a while to find any sort of useful um, online tutorial. So if you're like me, maybe this video is a refreshing shortcut uh, for that process. But anyway, um, the example that I'm using is the racial resentment scale that uh, is the Kinder and Sanders scale. And if you look, um, the first and fourth items in this scale are reverse coded. So if you look at the Cronbach's alpha without reverse coding the variables, you'll see that it's negative and it's very low. Um, and that's because these items uh, run in the opposite direction of the rest of the scale. So what we want to do is turn the fives into ones and the ones into fives and so on. So I'm just going to give you the um, table of the um, items so that we can see. All right. Uh, 968 people selected one, which in this instance is strongly agree. 350 people selected strongly disagree. And we're going to try to flip that. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to do multiple variables at one time using mutate add. Uh, you don't have to do multiple variables at one time. You can just do mutate and delete the mutate add and then just have the one variable that you want to do. But um, I thought this would be useful. So first make sure you have dplyr loaded and then the syntax that you want to use, and I'm gonna walk through this um, item by item to explain what's going on. So it may be a little bit slow for you and if just looking at the syntax is all you needed to see, feel free to copy it over and uh, uh, skip the rest. But we're gonna start by um, creating an output data set. And we're going to name it ANES, which is the same as the input data set, which means it's going to save over the original data set. So if you don't want to replace your existing data set, like you're worried that you might make an error, uh, you could rename it, you know, ANES1 or ANES1. R for you know reverse coded or whatever, uh, and that would create a copy of your data set with the recodings um, that you do. But here we're just going to save over the original uh, the original ANES data set with a new ANES data set. So we'll type ANES equals ANES, um, and then we'll put a pipe. And so that's the percent sign, the greater than sign, and the percent sign. And then on a new line, we're going to type mutate underscore at. And so that'll use the mutate at command, um, and then left paren. Uh, and here we're going to list all of the variables in the ANES data set that we want to recode using the um, command below. So to list anything in R, of course, you do C parentheses. So C left paren, and then in quote marks, you'll put the variables that you want to target for the recoding. So for us, it is um, left quote RR1 right quote, comma, left quote RR4 right quote, and then right paren to close out the C parentheses command. Um, but if you had more than those variables that you wanted to reverse code, you could list as many as you want within the C parentheses uh, and recode them all at one time. And then uh, put a comma, 
And then I have on a new line funds, F-U-N-S, which I'm pretty sure stands for functions. Um, and I do often get a message from R that this has been depreciated. And so I think there's a different um, argument that you can type beside funds that works as well. In fact, it may give us that and it may tell us what we can type instead and maybe we can update this. But um, this definitely still works. So F-U-N-S funds left paren recode is the name of the command in dplyr and then left paren again and here we put a period. So what's going on in this line? Um, so funds is telling it, okay, what I want you to use mutate at to do the following functions. And then within the parentheses, we put the function that we want it to do, which is recode. And then in parentheses, we have to put all of the old and new values that we want recoded. But the period right after that parentheses that follows recode is telling it to reference the X variables or to reference the variables from the list above. So if you weren't using a list, you could just put, you know, mutate at, or you could put mutate rr1 and then recode and put here rr1. But since we have a list of multiple, we'll put a period there and that'll tell it, hey, um, go reference the variables in the list above. So funds recode period, and then comma, and I have this started on a new line just because I think it's easier to look at with the size of the font that I have. Uh, it kind of runs off the window a little bit if I don't create new lines, but you don't need to create new lines. That's just what I've done for um, visual effect here. So the first thing we do is put the first number that we want recoded. So I want all values of one in the data set, and I have those in single quote marks. Um, and so it's left single quote, or inverted comma if you will, the number one, right single quote, equals, and then the number five, not in quote marks, um, and then a comma. And after that, the second number that you want recoded, so I want to turn all twos into fours, so I have two in those single quote marks, equals four, not in the quote marks, and then another comma, here I have three equals three, you know, three in the quote marks equals three not in the quote marks. Um, I don't know that that's necessary. I know that when you recode with car, you don't have to indicate if you want to keep variables the same, but it might be the case that um, if you don't tell dplyr what you want it to do with threes, it might delete them. So I don't know, I always put that there because I'm a completionist and why find out? Um, so three equals three comma and then four in the single quotes equals the number two comma five in the single quotes equals the number one. And then we have to close out all the parentheses. So a right parenthesis to close out the parentheses we started after the recode and then another right parenthesis to close out the parentheses that we started after the funds command, and then a third right parenthesis to close out the parentheses we started with mutate at. And so if we run all of this, it will recode, it will re recode RR1 and RR4 to the values that we have specified, which just reverses them, fives to ones and ones to fives, etc. So if we run that, now we can check to see that it worked by trying to get Cronbach's alpha again. And you see now Cronbach's alpha is 0.785, whereas before we reverse coded those items, it was negative 0.02. And we can also check the tables of our variables to make sure that all of the items are inverted and that everything worked according to plan. So initially on RR1, we had 968 people with a value of 1 and 350 people with a value of 5. Now we have 350 people with a value of 5 and 900, or with the value of 1, I'm sorry, and 968 people with a value of 5. So we can see that our reverse coding worked, uh, that everything looks appropriate. <clears throat> and um, that now we have a Cronbach's alpha that is um, consistent with what we would expect with a well-behaved and broadly used scale. <clears throat> so that was just a quick video on how to recode using dplyr. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching.